So this is the Roav Viva Pro, and it's a device that plugs into your car's power jack and runs Alexa, it's an FM transmitter, it has Bluetooth, and it has two quick charge USB ports. There's so much it can do. So when you plug it into your car for the first time, the setup is fairly easy. You download the Roav Viva app, and it walks you through connecting to it, tuning the FM frequency to what you'd like, and getting everything started with Alexa. And after that, it's pretty much just plug and play. You plug it into your car, boom, it starts right up, it connects to your phone, and you're good to go. So starting with the core functionality, this thing works great. The FM transmitter is high quality with no weird static or really anything cutting out. And you set the frequency in the app and it goes anywhere from 88.1 to 107.9, I think. And while the FM transmitter works great, this was actually my first complaint. You see, 88.1 is a radio station that is used almost everywhere. So you're basically overriding that radio station and in big cities I had problems with interference from whatever 88.1 was in that city so cheaper Bluetooth adapters that are 15 to 20 dollars on Amazon tune to at least 87.9 or I've got one that tunes to 87.7 and these are older stations that while not every car can tune to them they are basically not used anymore by big radio stations so you can tune that adapter to 87.7 and never have any interference if your car goes to that. Now don't get me wrong, I really love the design of this adapter. It's sleek, it's low profile, and it does its job well. Alexa runs very smoothly and is pretty fast even on data. So basically how Alexa works is when you talk to this device, it sends that signal to your phone and your phone sends it to Amazon server using cellular data. It comes back from Amazon server and goes through your phone back to here. And for all your voice has to travel and go through, it actually works pretty quickly on a solid LTE connection. Let's go for a drive and I'll show you what I mean. So the Roav Viva Pro runs Alexa very well, but there are some quirks and the biggest one is that it does not support Spotify. I just don't understand this. Every other Alexa device, including Amazon's own Echo, supports Spotify. It connects with your account and you can control your music using your voice. But with the Roa Viva Pro, well, <laughs> You're literally out of luck. It seems like based on the documentation online, it used to support Spotify and then they abruptly ended support. I'm not sure why this is, but I just know that it is really annoying to pay $70 for an adapter and then, surprise, you can't change your music using your voice. Now, another thing I realized is I can use Siri to change my music, to skip the track, to play and pause, or if you have Apple Music, you can even use Siri to change the track by using Hey Siri. And Hey Siri, works on the $14 Bluetooth adapters. So if you're getting what I'm saying, although it is really cool to have Alexa in your car, I just didn't find a lot of benefit in my real world testing. When I ask it for traffic updates, it usually picks like a store that's like across the country and is like, hey, yeah, you can get to Costco. It'll just be one day and 13 hours. Alexa, how long does it take to get to Costco? Okay, change of plan. I found a Costco wholesale. It is 35.6 miles away on Seaboard now Lane in Brentwood. Now Based on it current works. Traffic, it will take what about I mean. 49 minutes to drive there. Oh, thank you, Alexa. I slam you in my review, and then once you're under pressure, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna work properly. Okay, so the traffic updates are hit or miss. They might work, they might not work. So one thing that I really do love about this is the two quick charge charging ports. And I don't know what trickery Anchor is using, but they are the magicians at charging your phone fast. And even though it is a USB type A port, it is extremely efficient at charging my iPhone XS. And using Anchor's own Powerline lightning cable, I'm probably able to get to maybe 50% in 
40 minutes of charging, maybe 30 minutes. So it's maybe not quite as fast as the USB Type-C fast charger, but I'm gonna be honest, it is extremely efficient and fast, and way faster than Apple's five watt charging brick. And considering you get two of these ports, it is going to be a very valuable asset to have on road trips, or even just to drive around town. But once again, you can get an Anchor car charger that is just as fast as this or better for around $20. And you can get another FM adapter that works much the same as this one for $15 to $20 on Amazon. So if Alexa is not that helpful, is it really worth the extra $30 just for the bragging rights to be like, oh yeah, I have Alexa in my car. So the only other issue I have with this adapter is making calls. Now, although it supports Bluetooth calling, it's got the mic, obviously has a mic on it, and you can hear the call through your speaker, it seems like for whatever reason, calls constantly cut in and out. Now, music playback and audio playback is super smooth through Spotify on my phone. I never have any issues there, but the person on the other end of the phone call continuously has issues hearing me, and I hear their audio cutting in and out as well. However, I cannot fault Anchor for this specifically because this same type of thing happens on the $14 other Bluetooth adapter I have that also supports making calls. So it seems like just a quirk of these FM transmitters, and really you're probably not going to have the best quality for making calls unless you have a car that actually supports it. So at the end of the day, this is not a bad adapter. There's a lot of good to it, it's solid quality, and I think Anchor did a wonderful job integrating Alexa, making it work reliably, and making it high quality. But my issue with it is the price and the value that Alexa adds. For me personally, if I was gonna spend money out of my pocket on this, I would probably just buy a cheaper adapter like the one I had before getting this, and then maybe get an Anchor car charger if that's something that's important to you, but I don't know that I would go and spend $70 on this adapter. There's nothing majorly wrong with it, but it doesn't add enough value for me to be able to justify the cost. So what do you guys think of this adapter? Would you pay $70 for it, or would you rather go on the cheap and buy a different option? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. With that said, I will catch you guys next time.